Welcome to worship with First United Methodist Church of Loveland, Colorado. This is the last Sunday of September. So glad that you have found us and you are worshiping with us online. We've got a lot coming up right now in our church. Even though we're on the COVID lockdown in so many ways, we found ways to uh, keep reaching out to people and doing some new things. We have a book study that's going to be starting very soon, Waking Up White. Uh, the author of the book is Debbie Irving. She shares her journey of learning what it means to be white in the United States and her personal experiences dealing with understanding and confronting racism. This will be led by the Reverends uh, Christy Hornick and Lee Anderson Harris. Uh, it will happen online uh, with a Zoom connection. Just go to our website, that's fumcloveland.com. You can get all the information there about how to connect. For more questions, please give Lee a call. This begins October 7th. And we have another class starting on October 7th. Uh, it's a guided autobiography course led by Clay Carter. This 10-week uh, course uses materials from the book Telling the Stories of Life through Guided Autobiography Groups. As I said, it begins October 7, 10 o'clock, same time as the other group, also with a Zoom connection. For more information, please contact Clay Carter. Our senior high youth group will meet for breakfast Wednesday, this week, September 30th, uh, at 8 o'clock, out under the old oak tree, uh, the tree of life, as we're starting to call it. Uh, breakfast on the church lawn. Please come. And finally, our preschool children will be meeting Monday, September 28 at 9.30 in the morning for story time in the park. Uh, this will be with Laura. It's at Crow Park. Please use the west entrance. And now let's take a deep breath. Let's center ourselves with the Spirit of God. And let's worship.
Today I'm concluding our sermon series, Doorways to Peace. Scripture today comes from the second chapter of Philippians, Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, verses 1 through 11. I'll be reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being unified with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Now at this point, Paul takes an ancient hymn of the church and he quotes it, <clears throat> excuse me, he quotes it for the next several verses. This is that hymn. It ties right in what Paul just said. Who being in very nature with God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In verse 2, we read, Make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. The same mind. That means having the same intentions, the same priorities in regards to human relations. He speaks of the same love. That means the same intent to care for others primarily. Verse 3. He said, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. I think the best way to look at that is be motivated by a desire to respect the needs and desires of other people. Consider others in every decision you make. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. It's thinking more of others. Then in verse 4, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In other words, look to further the interests of other people, to promote others, to, to help others succeed. Dr. Albert Einstein once said, only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. I, I think he was saying the same thing. And I think that Paul and Jesus would agree with that statement. In verse 5, we read, In your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. You see, model your attitude toward others after Jesus Christ. Look to Jesus as an example of how to regard others, especially those who are left out. And so our doorway to peace today is through the doorway of choosing peace. I received an email some time back from an author, public speaker, Michael Hargrove. 
uh, he wanted to tell me a story that he thought I would appreciate. I did appreciate it. This is the story uh, that, that, that he told me. He said he went to the airport one day and he was picking up a friend from a flight as he was sitting there. Um, and this obviously was in a time when you could sit at the gate and watch people as they exit the, the planes. As he was sitting there waiting for his friend, he, he saw a man uh, exit and come over to right in front of him where he was seated. And, and this, this man greeted his family. Now the first thing he did was, was he bent down and got on the same level as his little boy who was about five or six years old. And, and he looked him right in the eye and he said, it's good to see you, son. I missed you so much. And then he gave him a great big hug and they just hugged and hugged. And that little boy, when, he was, when, when they released each other, he said, I missed you too, dad. And then he stood up and, and took a step over to his, his other son, who was about nine or ten years old. And he cupped the boy's face in his hands, and he looked at him right in his eyes, and he said, Oh, Zach, you are becoming such a fine young man. I love you so much. And he gave Zach a great big hug. And of course, Zach, who was nine or ten years old, he didn't say anything. But he didn't really need to say anything. It was understood between them. And then he turned to his wife who was holding in, in her arms a, a, a baby and he, he took the baby and he said, oh, my little girl, my little girl. And he put his head down and he kissed her all over her face and he cooed in her ear and whispered to her. And then after a moment, he looked into the eyes of his wife and he said, and now, I've saved the best for last. He took his wife in his arms and he kissed a passionate, romantic kiss. And Michael was just seated right there, right, they were just standing right next to him. He was watching all of this and he was amazed at what he was seeing. And finally, he, when they broke the kiss off, he interrupted them. He said, excuse me, but how long have you two been married? And without, without even looking at him, without breaking eye contact with his wife, the man said, we've been together 14 years. We've been married 12 years. And, and Michael said, oh, that's, that's, that's amazing. And, and how long have you been away? And he said, two whole days. Michael didn't know what to say. He was sure that the guy had been away for weeks, maybe months, but two days? And this is the way that they <laughs> greeted each other? Finally, he said, wow, when I'm married 12 years, I, I, hope, I hope my relationship is as passionate as yours. And that's when this guy looked at Michael and he said, don't hope, friend, decide. And with that, this family gathered themselves together. They, they began to walk away. Michael was just watching them walk down the hallway when his friend had, had uh, uh, came up to him from, uh, uh, from deboarding the plane. And he said, what are you looking at, Michael? And he said, my future. Because he made a decision. He wasn't going to hope that he, his marriage, his relationship was going to, to be that passionate. He was going to make it happen. He was going to do whatever he had to to make it happen. You know, when there are conflicts in human relationships, even close ones, like, like marriages and in families. We need to decide to resolve those conflicts. It's about choosing to be the best human being that you can be. Choosing to bring your best self into the relationship. 
sometimes when I'm performing a, a wedding for couples, I'll say something like, at the end of this ceremony, legally, you will be husband and wife. But still, you must decide every day that you want to be married. Because love is that kind of a decision. We, we make it again and again and again. And when we make that decision early in the morning, every day we make that decision. It changes the way we are the rest of the day. Peace and harmony don't just happen. We decide to make them happen. It's a choice. Now, what if we were to take that choice out of not just our closest relationships, our marriages, our, our families. What if we were to take that into the rest of the world? That's what we're talking about this month, is, is, is doorways to peace. Of course we need peace in our lives and peace in, with the closest people we live with. That's extremely important. But what about peace beyond that? Peace in the world. It, I, I, I'm convinced that that is about choosing to guard the interests of other people, choosing to be peacemakers, choosing to respect other people, choosing to help others succeed. That's what it's about. What we become are guardians of their souls. And now that's an awesome responsibility. But that's what it is. Guardians of their souls. We will look to their interests with them. We will look to Jesus as an example of how to relate to them. Guardians of their souls. A woman by the name of Cheryl Rice found a practical way to do that, to become what I would call a guardian of people's souls. Let me tell you her story. One day she was in a grocery store. There was one woman in front of her checking out her groceries. The cashier asked that woman, how are you doing today? And the woman, who looked very discouraged, said, Oh, I don't know. My husband lost his job. My, my son is up to his old tricks. It's not a good day. And, and, and Cheryl's heart went out to this woman. She just thought, is there just something I could do to help her? Is there some way I could reach out and make a difference? She didn't know what to do. She didn't know what to say. After a moment, the woman's groceries were, were bagged. The, the, the cashier apologized for her not having a good day. And she, she took her groceries out to the car. When, when Cheryl was done, she, was, she went out to the parking lot with her groceries and saw this same woman returning her cart. It occurred to her that maybe there was something she could do. She went over to this woman and, and she said, excuse me, but I, I heard you talking to the cashier a few minutes ago. I, I'm, I'm sorry that... Your husband's lost his job, and it's, it's such a tough time for you right now. You know, I really wish I could, that there was something I could do, but here, I want you to have this. And she handed her a business card. It only had two words on it. But when that woman read those two words on the business card, she burst into tears. And then she said, you have no idea how much this means to me. Well, the two women continued to talk for a few minutes, then they embraced one another. The two words on that card were, you matter. That's all. You matter. And that was exactly what this discouraged woman needed to hear. Cheryl received that card the first time when a colleague of hers gave it to her. She had been doing something and the colleague said, wow, you just did a great job with this. She gave her the card. That meant so much to her, she went home and ordered a box of them. 
And since then, she's been passing them out. Uh, she started with her friends and her family, giving them one when the, the occasion seemed to be appropriate. And then as she went on, she started doing it with other people, like the guy that, that uh, sold her fruit in the farmer's market. Pretty soon she was handing those cards out to strangers, like this woman in the parking lot. You matter is a powerful statement. Uh, Cheryl reminds us that other people matter. And telling people they matter also matters. It's important. People crave connection. And they feel so isolated. I think that is more true today with with our isolation because of the virus. People feel more isolation than they probably have ever felt before. And they need this encouragement from other people. Now, if Cheryl decided to do something big with this revelation that she had of passing cards out to people that say you matter, She started what's called a You Matter Marathon. No running involved. For the month of November, she gives free of charge to anybody who asks a box of You Matter cards. 30 cards in a box. 30 days in the month of November. And the idea is to give a card every day to somebody. It's amazing the difference it makes in their lives. Um, people are, are, are overcome with the, with the kindness and, and the spirit uh, they have because what, you, what you're doing is you're becoming a guardian of their soul. You're telling them something that's so sacred, so beautiful. They really matter. She just began this in 2016 and she's already given away one million cards. Uh, They've been shared by 100,000 people in 81 countries so far. And I love this idea. You know, sharing a You Matter card for one month, it can lift people up in an amazing way. It's a reminder that we are here to live for other people, as Albert Einstein says. That's what we're about. Telling people they matter enlists you on their team. You become a guardian of their soul. You notice them. You respect them. It shows that you want to further their interests. You want to help them succeed. Now, I've got a suggestion for our church. And the suggestion is that we make November this year a month in which we participate in the You Matter Marathon that we all who want to participate in this marathon get ourselves a box of You Matter cards and pass them out to our friends and to our families and and to other people in our lives, reminding them of how important they are. Now, I could tell you to go on the You Matter Marathon website and have Cheryl send you a box, and you can certainly do that. But I'm going to talk to a committee in our church and see if our church can make these cards available to you so that everybody gets 30 cards or more, if that's what you want, to pass out through the month of November. Uh, We'll send you reminders. We'll talk about ways in which you can pass out these cards. We'll talk about the difference it's making in people's lives to do this. This is a way of becoming the guardians of other people's souls. 200 people in our church, if they take 30 cards each, we will have passed out 6,000 cards in the Loveland area primarily by the end of the month. Do you know what a difference that can make to people? People who are feeling lonely and isolated. 6,000 contacts. It's a practical way to become a guardian of people's souls. You know, that's a choice that we make, to walk alongside people in this life. A doorway to peace is choosing peace. And choosing peace is choosing life the way Jesus intended that it be lived. Amen.
As we join in a moment of prayer, I'd like for the church to remember Jane Gill um, as she is uh, recovering from health issues, Flo DeMalley, um, Michelle Massey. i uh, also like to uh, mention that Cindy First passed away September 21st. Let's remember the family too of Lowell Teachout uh, who passed away last week. His memorial service will be held at the Memorial Burial Ground October 9th. And the family of Sharon Brundage, uh, her memorial service will be held outside here at our church on October the 3rd. Did I say October the 9th for Lowell Teach Out? I should have. Now would you join me for a moment of prayer. Oh God, we resonate with these words of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And now we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord Doubt true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where sadness ever joy. Go forth as guardians of souls and may God go with you and be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>